if there is anyone has had any um, highlights from the lockdown. If you want to raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Um, anyone want to share some things they've observed or they've had fun doing or not enjoyed doing? So just raise your hand or um, and I can unmute you and you can talk. Adrian. I did the supermarket, getting longer. <laughs> right, right out to the street now. It's, really? Yes, down the street. Yep. Cool. Anyone else? Anyone else have any experiences they've uh, discovered this week? Clyde? Yeah, just um, one of the things that um, I'm not so good at, Kim's much better than me, is communicating with my children. And so um, it's been quite nice to ring them up and have a little chat and see what they're doing and when I spoke to my daughter she was a bit like Adrian. and she was um, standing in a queue in the supermarket yeah. and we chatted for about 10 minutes and by the time we'd finished she just got to the doorway so yeah it's been um, uh, you know we, we get caught up in our lives sometimes that some of the important things we should be doing we, we neglect so I, I found that quite good I'll have to keep it up now. Great. <laughs> Anyone else? Cherie? Right, just unmute myself. Um, our family is keen on sports and uh, we talk about it. So that's how keen we are. So this week uh, I've decided that we should try and make an appointment. So we started a CrossFit program, which has been really good because it's for everyone who has never done any exercise. I think at the end of it, uh, what was really lovely, my granddaughter sent a text to the family and said, Oh, that was just the best time we've had as a family and a love way we encouraged each other. So I'm really enjoying these little times and, you know, little snippets, things that we haven't done before, but because we've got space and time, we're doing them and seeing the value of them. Fantastic. One more person? Pa. Oh, sorry. Um, honey. <laughs> yeah, despite um, all that we're hearing about the... Uh, coronavirus and the negative uh, things that comes with it. Uh, for me, this, and I think for Pai as well, and our whole family, there's a lot, been a lot of positives out of this. I think it's given us time to slow down and to think of what is important, most important in life right now. Uh, we've had time to sit together and have meals together, some things that we haven't been able to do in the past. Um, and also for me and Pa personally, it's uh, we've started with the Youth Week of Prayer, but we've decided to continue. And it is also something that we had wanted to do in the past, but we have been able to because of going out to work and coming back and being tired. And we've also uh, like uh, continued with 100 days of prayer. So, you know, I could uh, go on, but uh, you know, God is good. And this is what he's been, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, doing to us personally, uh, in our personal lives, in our personal relationship with him. And I'm sure it's with uh, the most of us. So yes, God is good. It's wonderful, great to hear. Thanks for sharing. Um, okay, so we'll just move on to the, uh, the message now. I'll just get my slides up and... Uh, it should be, uh, hopefully you can see that. Can you see the uh, get out of jail free card? So um, you may remember the game Monopoly. So there are three criteria in Monopoly when you can go to jail. Number one, you can receive a, go, a, a jail card, go to jail card. Number two, you can throw a double three times in a row. Or three, you can land on the go to jail spot on the board. And when you go to jail, you have to stay there for three turns. And it's amazingly frustrating because you have to sit there for three turns and you miss out buying properties and advancing your game. So it can be disastrous going to jail. Um, and while you can get some money to get out, the best way to get out is to use a get out of jail free card that you can obtain through the game. So under lockdown at the moment, you may feel like you're in jail and want to escape. So here are some great examples of some amazing jail escapes um, that I found. So the first one is, uh, hang on a second, my moment, I'll just... Uh, should be uh, there. 
Uh, so the first one is a French convict escaped prison by using nectarines painted as grenades to get onto the roof and into a helicopter piloted by his wife, who had taken special lessons for only for the escape for the helicopter. The next one, um, who you may know, is drug kingpin Al Chapo escaped from prison in a dirty laundry basket after he bribed multiple guards to wear them out of prison in it. And he spent $2.5 million in bribing 70 guards and one of them's in prison for it. And then again in 2015, a couple of years ago, he was recaptured and then escaped again when his accomplices dug a mile long tunnel under the prison and into his cell and drove him out through a makeshift motorcycle mounted on rails. Stephen Russell escaped from prison by using laxatives to fake AIDS symptoms. Posing as a doctor looking for prisoners who would sign up for an experimental treatment he then called the prison and then volunteered for the fake program. Once out, he sent a death certificate to the prison. A criminal, Richard Lee McNair, escaped from prison three times. Once by using lip balm on his handcuffs, the second time by plumbing up the ventilation duct, and the third time he mailed himself out of jail in a package and ran into a cop convicting him. He was convincing him he was an out-of-town jogger. Three men from the Alcatraz prison used some spoons to dig tunnels into their cells that led into an unguarded utility corridor. They then climbed up the roof down a 50 inch drain pipe over a 12 foot security fence and then inflated a makeshift raft to use in the sea below. They were never found. Shop Guy Bok, a South Korean yoga master, escaped from prison by squeezing through a six by 18 inch food slot in his cell. It took him only 34 seconds to escape. Moondon Joe escaped from prison so many times that an Australian prison built an escape proof cell for him where he was chained to a window. The cell was light proof and air proof, lined with a thousand nails, but he ultimately escaped as well. In a prison that was a scheme to escape proof, John Dillinger escaped by using a wooden pistol that he whittled in his cell. He imitated 33, intimidated 33 people with a fake gun to get a real submachine gun and bragged while escaping. Ha ha ha, and all I did this was with a wooden gun. Sentenced to four years in prison for stealing tools, left him to him in his father's will. Out of 13 attempts, Mark de Frist made to escape out of prison, seven were successful. He was able to memorize and reproduce the jailer's keys on anything that was available. Auschwitz prison prisoner, Kamir Pichewski, and three others escaped a Nazi camp by dressing up as Nazi officers and commandeering the car of the deputy Führer. When they got to the gate, they simply barked orders at the guards who opened the gates for them. As you can see, some people go to extraordinary lengths to, uh, to get out of jail. Um, one of my personal experiences, who, who here has ever been to an escape room? So basically there's one in Manukau and I recommend you go to them. So a few months ago, Verity and I and, and our family went to an escape room and we went to the Western Jail. And we had one hour to escape from this jail um, before we were going to be hanged. Um, or, and also through the process, we had to discover evidence that proved that we weren't guilty so we wouldn't get hanged. And we had to find keys. We had to look at, um, look at things on the wall to, to give us clues as to codes for padlocks. And we were in this jail cell to start with and we had to disassemble the, the bars for the window and reach out through, put some bars together and grab the key off the jailer's desk so we could escape out of our cell. So, um, that was quite a good experience um, of trying to get out of, uh, of jail. Um, but for me, the thought of actually being in jail is terrifying. It would be horrible. Who would want to be stuck in a cell, being restricted, not able to do exercise, just stuck there all day? The boredom would be incredible. Well, probably the worst thing about jail would be that you'd have to rub shoulders with some pretty unpleasant people. And uh, people are in jail generally not because they're nice people. There'd probably be gang wars, threats and violence. Um, would be probably be a terrible place to go. So I just want to know if anyone here had any experiences with jail. Has anyone here actually been in jail? Has anyone here actually been to a jail or know people that have been there? If you want to raise your hand, we'll um, talk to you. Joe, um, what have you got there? I uh, went to Alcatraz and had a look in the cells and around the area. It was quite me. I was high. What was it like at Alcatraz? Were they small cells? 
Uh-huh. Very small cells, very um, ugly looking things that um, you wouldn't want to stay in. It was extremely tiny. Wow. Thanks for sharing, that's great. Anyone else have any experiences with uh, jails? We'll go with um, Barney. Yeah, I'm smiling yes. because I've actually been in a cell overnight. Really? What'd you do? <laughs> it's a long story. I don't want to talk about it. All right. But it's here in New Zealand. I slept in a cell for two nights because it was on Constitution Day, I think the following day. So I had no oh. choice, but I tell you, I wouldn't want anyone sure to be there. Not. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Just raise your hand. Uh, Delwyn. I went visiting somebody in jail and the uh, going through the gates and having things slam behind you and know that you can't get out unless they let you. Uh, it mm -hmm. was not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, I would hate to be there as a prisoner. Um, even if there's a lot of things that they can do and courses they take and all that sort of thing to try and improve their lives while they're in jail, they still do not have freedom and freedom is a real treasure. Good, thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Ron? About halfway through my six year jail career, <clears throat> in one of my numerous transfers from one end of the country to the other to over half the jails in New Zealand, <laughs> I got offloaded from the prison van, dumped at the gate, van turned around and drove off. And I'm looking around, <laughs> and all I could see was great fields of pasture and farmland in the distance and goodness knows what. So I just sat quietly on my baggage at the gate it was over an hour and a half before a vehicle finally turned up <laughs> and the screw looked out the window and said, who are you? What are you doing here? I said, good question. <laughs> to this day, I don't know how many heads rolled over that, but yeah, <laughs> I could have just walked off into the sunset, and created a big problem for them. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, thanks for sharing, Ron. Uh, one more, anyone else have a jail experience? Put your hand up. We'll go with uh, Christina, I'll unmute you, yep. I think, I think so, you might have to, um, oh no, sorry, all good, carry on. Okay, so my experience has been treating people in jail, yep. in one of the mental uh, health um, uh, clinics that we have, and yep. it's pretty intimidating, eh? Like when they look at you, and even though you're there to help them, just the, you have this sense of insecurity, like anyone can jump from behind you, you don't feel safe. So it's not a very um, pleasant um, experience at all uh, to be around a, a jail, particularly with people who have a mental illness as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty full on. Okay. Thanks for sharing. So just to give you some facts about jails. Um, so there's actually in New Zealand, believe it or not, there's actually 10,000 people in prison in New Zealand. Um, in the USA, there's actually 2 million people in prison. And the USA, just for interest, has the highest rate of incarceration in the world, with nearly 1 in 100 people in America are in jail. I mean, how amazing is that? Um, so the USA also has 25% of the world's prison population. And that's mainly due to the fact that they have very long prison sentences compared to the rest of the world. Also, interestingly enough, the US actually has some of the highest rates of crime despite having long jail sentences. So long prison terms do not actually correspond with less crime. And what actually does correspond is that when people know that they are going to be caught or they, they will be caught, they don't commit crimes in general. Jails in the moderate, modern setting like New Zealand and America, while they're not very pleasant places to be, are probably a hundred times more pleasant than jails in developing countries or in Bible times. Um, so the jails that we have now in New Zealand and America even, you know, they do, people have TVs, they have three hot meals, they have air flowing, they have heating, they've got toilets, bedding, um, and generally get learning and exercise. Because if you think back into biblical times, 
um, or even some countries today, some of the jails are just horrendous. They're just basically dungeons, there's no toilets, there's no very little food, um, some of the most horrible places you can live in. So jails can, uh, it can be very wide ranging. So speaking of jails, you guys, everyone here is currently in lockdown. So you're in your own home, your own jail, you are all under house arrest. Um, so there's possibly, and this is probably the time in your life, that you'll possibly be the closest to being in jail. Um, so you've now been locked down for a week and a half. Um, and for some people, it's and for us, it, it could be the beginning of a very long sentence. We don't, don't know. Oh, hang on a sec, someone's just sharing the screen here. We'll just um, change that. Can you fix that, Kim? Oops. Hang on a second, we've just got some viewing screen system. Is, it, is everyone still seeing me okay? Mm. Sorry, is that better? Thumbs up? So Ron, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, you overlooked one statistic when you were talking about the, the stats for the USA. What was that? The USA, yes, it has the world's highest um, incarceration. Yes. But on a per capita basis, New Zealand is next to the US. Yes, very high rates of... Um... We're higher than any, any other Western country outside of the States. Yes. Well, thanks for sharing. And we Scandinavian countries. Yes. So getting back to the, the script. So yeah, so basically, um, we don't know how long this lockdown will take. We don't know what a sentence is. Is it going to be two more weeks or is it going to be two more years? That's probably one of the annoying things that probably frustrates people most. Most We don't know how long our house arrest will possibly be. And uh, so how long can you stand it? I mean, we're all been here for a week and a half. We're probably kind of handling it, but in, in, a, in six months time, is everyone going to be wanting to feel like escaping? Um, most likely. Yep. So let's have a look at what uh, the Bible says about jails, and we'll just um, we'll just flip to some of the people in um, in jail. Um, I'll just share my screen. Um, so some of the people in jail um, include number one Joseph. So Joseph, there are actually quite a few Bible characters in jail, but there's three I'm going to focus on today. The first one was Joseph, and uh, Joseph was put in prison after being fairly accused of attempted rape. Um, and in prison, he ended up becoming in charge of all the prisoners. Um, he learned skills and God developed him and prepared him for his future job that was coming up. God put him in touch with people who knew Pharaoh um, and obviously set up the events where, where Joseph would end up being the prime minister of Egypt. And, and one day he went from being a prisoner in a cell to being prime minister of Egypt. So that's an amazing story. Now, the second story is, um, is Paul. And Paul... Um, was in prison for around about five years. He spent about two and a half years in an actual cell and around about two and a half years under house arrest. He was in Philippi, got put in jail for casting out a demon. In Jerusalem, could have been put in jail for bringing a Gentile into the temple. And in Caesarea, that was where he was set to be trialed. And while in prison, he made himself quite useful. He ended up writing the books Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon while he was under house arrest. Um, the third one we look at is John the Revelator. And John was exiled to Pas Patmos, which was kind of like uh, the Australia in the day. No offence to any Australians here, um, as, a, as a convict. Um, and he, while he was there, what did he write? He wrote the book of Revelation. So, um, and while there are a lot of others, um, people in the Bible who got into prison, those three key ones, and through those periods, as you can see, God actually um, used them um, in a positive way to, um, to do things while they were in jail. I mean, if you compare our lockdown or our jail current to other lockdowns in history, we've got it pretty cruisy, really. I mean, other places around the world, if you were living in Syria five years ago, what would a lockdown look like there? No food for years, you're probably going to get bombed. Um, so there's a lot of things that could be happening there. If you're in London during World War II, what do the bombings look, look like? Um, so there's plenty of, um, of things that um, could be happening there. Um, someone's tinking their cereal bowl. Who's that? You know if you mute, mute everyone, Kim. Um, yeah, so um, in Ethiopia during the famines um, so and during wars, so in terms of the lockdowns we've got, um, the fact that we are blessed 
to have food, to have all these wonderful things. Um, we've got peace, we've got shelter, we've got electricity, we've got internet, we can do this. It's actually a pretty, um, pretty amazing, as far as lockdowns go, um, we can't really complain compared to most of Earth's history. Um, so what does God say about all this? So I want to um, just have a look. I've got some key points here. So basically I've got six points about what, what God has recommended and I think would, would want us to do during lockdown. Um, and we want to be able to make sure that we can use our lockdown to release ourselves from jail and use it as the most wonderful transforming time to develop and improve our lives. So here, here, are, here are six verses from the Bible that I think can be really um, appropriate during lockdown. Uh, so firstly, read the word like never before. Joshua 1.8, book, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. You may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. So utilize this time to spend your time in the word. Read good godly books. Read some of Alan White's books, Desire of Ages, Acts the Apostle, Great Controversy. You know, read some really good stuff and fill your mind with, with God's word. It's very, very powerful. Secondly, pray like never before. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Um, make sure you pray. Get down on your knees. Pray for yourself, other people, and how wonderful God is. Number three, rest. What an amazing opportunity we have to rest, instead of rushing around and doing everything. In Psalms 4.8, In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Exercise and health. Have great health habits. And 3 John 1 2, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and all that may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So take this as an opportunity to get out and get some exercise um, and, and do that well. Number five, contact people and love them. The greatest commandment of the Bible is this, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So we've got plenty of opportunities. And I think as we recommend you to contact five people each week, it's an awesome opportunity. And it's great to hear stories where people have been able to connect with other family members more than they, they potentially would have before. Um, number six, set new plans for your life with God. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. It's an amazing time we can sit down and replan and refocus our life. Um, there's a lot of people who are going, potentially going to go through life-changing events shortly, um, but use it as a positive. Use it to reset your life and set your life on a new course. So there's the, the six things. So number one, read the word like never before. Pray, rest, have great health habits, connect with people and love them, and set new plans for your life with God. Um, so there you go, that's, that's some great plans there. So to get, out of, to get out of jail, the answer is simple. So just do all these things and you'll be released from jail. While you're at home, if you're doing these things active in your life, it won't feel like jail. You can use this as a positive experience to not be in jail. Um, so basically it's all about changing your attitude and stop focusing on yourself or ourselves and our own needs and focusing on other people and on, the, on a positive future. Um, so we don't know when this lockdown will end. We don't know whether it's going to be two weeks or two years. Um, and we do know that we're about to go through some hard times. Just in the last couple of days, I've heard of people have been made redundant. Um, people will lose their jobs. People will lose, potentially lose their businesses. Um, it's, and it is going to be a, a couple of tough years. Um, but I believe overall in our life, it will be relatively brief. There's generally a market dip or correction every eight or 10 years. And by pretty much the economy goes down, things get tough for a couple of years and come back. It's healthy for the economy to have these things happening in a way. Um, some businesses will be closed down that should perhaps have been closed down anyway, but new ones will open up, new opportunities will come. But the world will be very different. Um, there are potential freedoms that we will lose as part of this. Due to what's going on in China, some of the things in there are, are, very, are very scary in terms of the freedoms we may lose, um, and potential restrictions may increase. Um, but still, compared to any crashes, wars, or depressions in the past, um, in terms of the, our ability to have food and have the basics, um, we, we should be fine. Um, I personally have three businesses, and over the next you know, months and years, I'm going to have to navigate very carefully through this, and with a lot of wisdom, prayer, and hard work. Currently, my cafes are closed. We're earning no money, but we've got expenses going out, so it's going to be a very tough time. 
But, um, but overall, I'm optimistic that we'll get through this. So this situation, no matter what happens, it's going to be a tough couple of years. But I'm optimistic that in one or two years, we'll look back and uh, we'll, we'll get through this. So it's important to be positive through all this. And if you're doing all these steps, if we're praying, if we're seeking through God's word, if we're resting, keeping our health habits well, connecting with people, then um, we'll be absolutely fine. And it's really important to know that through this time, um, even if we are losing our jobs, we're isolated or whatever's happening through this time, this cannot possibly stop us from having an awesome relationship with God. There's nothing that can stop that, nothing that can separate us. And these things do not stop us from following God's commands to go and share with other people. In fact, through this time, we probably have more opportunities where people are more receptive to hear the word of God than ever before. So we need to look at this, this um, particular time as a positive, an opportunity where God can use us and look for opportunities to share God's word. So um, through the midst of all this, um, this, this what's happening, we need to make sure we're positive and, and, and doing these things. Um, I just want to rip just um, another verse, um, which is Luke. Um, Luke 4.18. And this is, the, this, is, this is when Jesus was, um, after he was on the mount, he came in, uh, into the temple and he talked to all the people and he, he recited the words of Isaiah, which prophesied about him. And this is the, these are the first words he read out about what, how Isaiah had prophesied about Jesus. And Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. So this is why Jesus came. This is the good news. He's anointed. He's been anointed. He's going to free us. He's going to give us sight, and he's going to set us free. So that's one thing to, to really, really focus, to, to, um, to focus on. And one thing um, through the next couple of days is we're still stuck at home, and while it's kind of been fun for a week, it's going to get harder for us all. So during this time, we can be tempted to stress and worry about things. Um, we can potentially spend the whole day in our pajamas watching Netflix, um, we can potentially, um, you know, live in a mess, eat canned food, but I encourage you to do all you can to kind of keep, keep really good habits, good personal habits, um, with your health habits, your sleep, your reading, get up at a regular time, get dressed, um, and use it as a time to, you know, as a positive time to keep these disciplines in your life. So uh, make sure that through this time, and it could be just two weeks, and even if it is two weeks, don't waste this experience. Make sure you use it to its full potential as a very positive impact on your life. And use this time positively. Don't don't uh, squander it. This this amazing time of rest and peace that we have. Um, while you're growing, Nelson, have you been uh, spending your time on uh, on Netflix in your pajamas? Just kidding. Um, yeah. So yeah. So making sure it is an opportune time. So try these six things out and do them every day. And no longer can you use the excuse, "I don't have enough time." No one has that excuse anymore, do you? We didn't have any of it now. Use an excuse. You know, we all know you're lying. You can't use that one anymore. So you don't have it, have a, you can't see you've got enough time to connect with God, connect with others, and do these wonderful things that you could be doing. So you just as a wonderful opportunity to reset your life, to get in touch with God, to get in touch with family, and um, make this lockdown the next two to four to six to eight weeks one of the pivotal highlight the times of your life. And in five years' time, you look back and go, wow, that lockdown was the best thing that ever happened for me. And I'm going to, oh, that really changed the direction of my life. So I hope you're encouraged by that and, um, and can do those things. And, uh, and just before we finish, what I want to do is if there's anyone like to raise their hand and share, if there's anything you want to change for the next week. So I'd like people to share if there's something you've learned through these verses or the sermon today. Something you'd like to share. Um, so raise your hand. So I'll, go, I'll just unmute you. So I'll go to Ron. So Ron. Oh, sorry, unmute. Sorry, Ron, you're not unmuting. Oh, yeah, you go, go now, Ron. There's only 24 hours in the day. I just don't have enough time. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Farai, I'll just unmute you there. Sorry, it takes a... Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. Go, Farai. <laughs> Go for I, you're unmuted. Um, I think for me personally, um, I'm gonna spend more time with God, like you're saying, um, 
we have so much time now on our hands so it's a good opportunity to spend more time with god in prayer and um yeah <laughs> awesome that's great anyone else raise your hand i'll go with dot sorry I'm, uh, sorry just unmute Oh, you, oh, you got on control, can you unmute? So I was trying to pressure unmute, but it's not unmute. I, I go for it now, Violet. Oh, so I, I really enjoyed being able to come to the prayer meeting, um, which I haven't done in a long time. It's, it's been a blessing of being just able to stay at home, but be part of the prayer meeting on, on Wednesday night. So, yeah, I plan to keep. Um, attending the prayer meeting via zoom it's been a blessing wonderful thanks for sharing put your hand up anyone else would like to, to share something they can do anyone anyone last opportunity oh yeah we'll go with um pa let me just unmute you there yep go pa i think that like um this lockdown has sort of helped me identify a lot of things that I was doing that I wasn't necessary wasn't really an important thing when you don't do those things now you feel that there hasn't been much of a change in your life and it actually adds to your life when you don't do stuff um, I think with all the shops closed and stuff like that you sort of realize you don't need as much stuff you used to go out for um, so it's just you know declaring your life identifying what's most important which I know uh, we all share is that we need more time with God um, in, um, now and moving forward. So, um, yeah, basically just um, being aware of what's important, um, family, what God has blessed you with, and um, time to spend in His Word and um, with Him in prayer. Yeah. One more. Uh, Kim. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, Rena just put up keeping up with morning and evening devotions with my children, and oh, yes. I was thinking that's really neat because it's in the same line as lo what everyone else has said. You know, just spending more time with God, but to actually be, um, you know, doing it with the children, it's what a wonderful experience for them. That's great. Without the rush of getting off to school. Thanks, Lorena. Sorry, I missed your message there, Lorena. Um, cool. Uh, do we have any more? One more. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. So thank, thanks for sharing. I hope you um, yeah, can be inspired by that. Read God's word. And just to, um, to repeat the, um, the, the things, um, basically. Um, so read the word like never before um, in great books. Um, pray like never before. Um, get lots of rest. Um, keep your good health habits up with your diet and exercise. Connect with people. Um, we're very blessed to have this technology. We connect with people and make sure you love them and share your love. And uh, set new um, plans for your life with God. Take this time to think positively and, um, and set a new plan. So if you'd like to bow your heads, we'll just um, say, um, say prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you uh, for this lockdown. We pray that we may use this as a positive thing. We don't know where it goes. It's scary for a lot of people and we just um, leave it in your hands. But regardless of that, Lord, we pray that we will be uh, everyone here will be able to connect with you, connect with family, and use this as an opportunity to reset our lives, to have a great time with you. Please bless everyone here. Please keep everyone safe. And be with us through the Sabbath, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So there we go. So.